Gentlemen, very warm welcome to the top of the BMW Tower. Pleasure to be here, Mark. Thank you. An absolute unique opportunity with a magnificent view. If you look down the south, you see the city of Munich with um, the Alps in the backdrop. Beautiful scenery. Yeah. We go more to the uh, west side. You'll have the um, Olympic Stadium in the Olympic Village. And further to the north, we'll have the plants of BMW. Yeah. And many of these places you will visit today, driving around on the R18. And next stop for us will be just down there, BMW Welt. Okay guys, it's good to have you here to show you around uh, BMW Welt, but before we go inside, I'll just get you to put on your masks. Sure. So welcome to BMW Welt, the home, the heart of our brand. Um, BMW Welt, this building that we're in now, actually opened in 2007. This building here, now the biggest tourist attraction anywhere inside Bavaria. Okay, so every year, well, last year, uh, we get more than 3 million visitors coming here wow, to the home of BMW. So, yeah, it's, um, it really is an amazing place. What's really cool about the building here, apart from this amazing architecture, is that this is the only place in the world where you can go and see all of the BMW brands in one place. So the first place we're going to make a stop along the way here is on the right-hand side, and that's at the smallest brand of all, and that's Mini. Okay, you guys, both good British men, yeah. all right, yeah. know the British brand Mini. Yeah. All right. It is the German version, okay, so the steering wheel's on this side for you guys. Hop in and have a bit of a look at the Mini GT. You're talking about over uh, 300 horsepower in this car. Oh, that's a bit. So in a tiny little car like we've got here, it really is um, a great little fun car to drive on the streets. You get your bum down nice and close to the road, and it's really the best example of getting that go-kart feeling that <laughs> Mini love to, uh, to produce. That's a beautiful little car, isn't it? And we're going to turn things around, and we're going to go and have a bit of a look at Rolls-Royce. Okay, if you want to see what it feels like, hop in, sit in the car. You going to um, drive me, Tom? Yes. I'm going to go in the back. No. Where, where do you want to go, lad? Now, the thing that really sets Rolls-Royce apart from their competitors is the way these cars are made. And uh, you can see some of the things here. Put your feet or your hands down on the floor, feel the floor mats. Okay, the very best lamb's wool, the very best leathers, the very best wood, all basically manufactured by hand. The engines themselves are actually built here in Munich. Then they're shipped to Goodwood in England. Okay, the carosserie, the body of the car, is basically also built uh, here in Germany and then shipped across. And then it's just assembled more or less by hand. Okay, so to give you an idea, across the street, thousands of robots doing a lot of the work. Here at Rolls-Royce, they've only got four robots. And the only job they do is painting the cars. Yeah. And in fact, even when they paint the cars, they polish the car afterwards for five hours by hand to get the finish that you're looking at now. Yeah. On average, and I say on average because it can vary greatly, it takes about 450 hours to produce one of these cars. Little thing just here in the door, if you want to have a bit of a look, yeah. who dares step out of the car. <laughs> you notice something here. This is a great one for you guys from Europe. And you notice, touch of a button, <laughs> you've got an umbrella. Yeah. Now, you notice, colors match the car perfectly. Oh, These umbrellas are once again handmade to suit this car that we're talking about right here. Brilliant. The umbrella alone costs around about 700 US dollars. All right. Now you might think that putting a wet umbrella into the door of a car could be a problem in terms of corrosion. So inside the doors here, they've got a drainage system that actually helps dry the umbrellas and make sure that there's no damage to the car as well. Let's go this way. Let's finish things up today with something that you guys probably know more about than I do. I hope so anyway. That's well, um, the BMW sure. 
Motorcycles. Um, we know this one, though. You know, I think everyone knows BMW builds great cars. Not everyone is aware that BMW also build great bikes, something that you guys know, of course. But what most people don't realize is that before we were building cars, we started with motorbikes. 1923, we built the first motorcycles. So basically since that point, we've been building um, motorbikes ever since. For a long time, they were literally built across the street in that factory that we can see there, yeah. all right? So you guys had some time to get acquainted to the R18. Yeah, yeah. But now it's time to move back to a product you're much more familiar with, back to the S1000RR. And in particular, well, today we're going to have a look, a specific look, at the engine at our dyno facilities. Looking forward to that? Oh yeah. Let's get a look. So guys, that's just a little quick look around BMW Welt. Hopefully it's giving you a bit more of a chance to see what we do here in the building, but also what the BMW Group's about. Thanks for taking a bit of time to come and have a look. No worries, thank you. Good luck this year on the bikes. All right, hopefully we get to see you on the podium, the top podium, a number of times this year. And um, maybe we'll see you again sometime. Thank you. Thank you. So these premises are our dynos, which we inherited from the uh, Formula One project. Uh, so they give us the best facilities ever. And this is where we uh, create the horses. So we can simulate uh, speeds as well uh, to have a rem air effect in the airbox. Then the middle screens, the three middle screens here uh, are to control the dyno so we can run automated programs um, we can simulate tracks, we can um, run whatever profile we would like. And <clears throat> on the very left, the top screen is the application, as you might know it from the track. And the bottom screen is the actual uh, indication, which means on our development engines, we have pressure sensors right in the, in the cylinders and in the intake and sometimes exhaust, uh, depending on what we are trying to achieve. <clears throat> so we can online measure the insulin and the pressure of every single uh, combustion. So that's it from the control room. If we continue through that door, we'll have a look at the engine itself. Smells good. To do power development and application, that's an absolute must to be able to measure as precise as you can because you're looking for, for small differences. Right guys, so just after we have visited the dinos, this is just a good example of uh, how close we are together with the other departments of uh, BMW. There's BMW Motorrad, and right here in this building is BMW Motorsport, so uh, the four-wheel side of motorsport. Um, so I would say, let's go around the corner and let's have a look there. Come with me. Right guys, so here we are at our next stop. Um, the Temple of Motorsport for the four-wheel cart vehicles. Welcome at the four-wheel division of Motorsport. Uh, let's just have a look around what we have here in our foyer. So this building is, is uh, Motorsport, everything from design to testing, everything in this building. And in the foyer, we have a few cars to look at. So here's our M4 GT4. This car is customer racing, so it's, it's being sold to customers. Uh, therefore, obviously, uh, focus is drivability, not only for the top professionals, but also uh, for guys who just enjoy themselves on a race weekend, uh, having fun with motorsport. Um, it's obviously based on the uh, Road M4 and, and still a large chunk of it is, is road car like. So the M4 is actually a very good basis for this car. If you want to hop in, just to get an idea. Let's go it's ahead. not like on a bike car, it's more more enclosed, but still interesting. So as you can see, all the luxury from the road car is gone. But apart from that, functionality-wise, it's pretty similar. You still have uh, uh, the, the gear shifter, for example, is the same as in the, in the road car. But what, what's mainly different is all the safety equipment. So you have a roll cage, obviously, you have a racing seat, and because it's a, it's a very high-profile racing seat, you can't adjust the seat. That's why you need to adjust the steering wheel and the pedals. Something you don't see very often, this is a wind tunnel model. 
the reason why we have, we have a model scale in a wind tunnel is because we're printing a lot of parts. So all our test parts, so these black parts here, they're all 3D printed and you're just much quicker uh, in a small scale car and the forces are lower. So you can, you can test a lot of variants very quickly. I think it's as well interesting to mention, although the vehicles are completely different, we do use a lot of synergies in between us. So the colleagues of the four-wheeled motorsport uh, division uh, assist us as well with um, calculations, computed fluid dynamics for the bikes, uh, as well as construction work. So let's have a look at this one. Uh, there we already deviate a little bit more from the road car side. Have a look inside if you like. Oh yeah. Hey. That looks pretty smooth. Yeah, you fit pretty good. Oh, this, this, I mean, there's no question, it's certainly being built for myself. It looks like so, a snug so fit. I, so I would like to... Um, Done the steering wheel? Well, I mean, that would be uh, an idea, to be honest, yeah. I think the only point the same as our on, on our bikes is the dashboard. Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not so much different. I do have a passion for the four wheels, I have to admit. Definitely a lot more buttons and options inside the uh, the world of four wheels that's for sure so uh, if the if it's a competition they definitely win but judging by the inside of here i think uh, i think there's a lot more requests needed well we've got a wiper look here we've got a wiper we've got one on the dash what have we got on the dash three four five <laughs> 12 options there how many options on the map 12 options. Right, Mark, uh, I think you need to get back to the drawing board. I think I only have four options, so uh, let's keep working. All right, you've seen enough of the real cars. Yeah, Shall we have a look at a virtual one. Yeah, there we go. Let's, get let's look at some virtual cars then, right. So here we are at the simulator. Let's just go through this control room real quick and then look at the heart of what it's about. So as you can see, there's a, there's a DTM chassis currently mounted on there. We can swap the chassis depending on the, on the project. The focus here is to get the driver as much of an immersion, is the technical term, as good as possible. Do you think one day you could simulate uh, the motorbike? Well, we would need to have a look at it. I don't think there's one in existence yet, uh, but I think what we've learned from here, we can also translate to some extent. All right, All right. let's okay. move on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, cheers. Cheers. So last but not least, we'll show you a bit around our workshop here. And uh, this is a bit different compared to what we've seen before. It's an electric car, it's a formal e-car that is just being prepared for going to the next test session. Yeah, as you can see, it's a full Formula car. The front part majority is, uh, is a standard car, but the heart and soul, luckily you get to see it now. There are the boys working on it on the background. Uh, all you see there is, is what we have done. So the entire rear structure, the rear suspension, and most importantly, what's inside there is the powertrain. And that's what really Formula E is about. That's where, where you need to have the efficiency and the, the high precision with the energy management. But just to give you a short, brief view on that one as well. All right, so I hope I could give you some insights of what we're doing here and then I wish you best of luck and a lot of successful rest of your season. Thank you, I appreciate it. Cheers. Enjoy. Cheers.